there are a lot of great podcasts out there. And one of the things that I've been doing is recommending a podcast at the end of each episode. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end because I guarantee you the podcast I recommend you're going to love. It's been a while since I've done a podcast of the Harford County Health Department. And I got to admit, God, I miss them. You know, during the pandemic, there was a period for a long time, I didn't get to see any of them there. And yeah, once the pandemic was over, we started recording again. And then I haven't seen them again for months. And they called me up and said, Rich, we need to do this again. And I was so excited. And on this one, we're going to be talking about Medicaid renewal. So during the pandemic, everything was extended. But now that extension is over and you're going to find out on this episode about Medicaid renewal and some other things about Medicaid that I didn't even know about. Enjoy the conversation. Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than me. Oh man, you Come already on. said it. I was gonna ask her. She remembered the day. <laughs> Sitting here at the Harford okay. County Health Department today with M Chip, right? Maryland Children's Health Program, and we're gonna be talking about Medicaid renewal. And I want to start at my left. Everybody, go around and just introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Pamela. Good afternoon. I'm Giovanna. Hi, I'm Karen. And I'm Naomi. I'm Rania. I'm Sarah. Alejandra. Jeremy. Zill. And Zach. I told you I'd get you all to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, Medicaid renewal. What exactly? Well, first of all, because wasn't there something passed down during COVID? There we go. That's a great start. That's a great oh, start. <laughs> Look <yeah>. at you. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a Medicaid extension, a pandemic extension, which meant that we couldn't shut anyone down that had medical assistance in the state of Maryland unless they passed away or had moved out of state. So if you applied in 2019 and you were due for renewal in March of 2020, you've been running on medical assistance every since with no renewal being done. So we have not looked at your income where you live, nothing, yeah. your status. Since 2019 to now? Correct. Wow. Okay. So this is the first month that we're starting to do <laughs> renewals again since March of 2019. So it's a big change for us. Um, yeah. They've just been extending and extending and extending yeah. it. Wow. So when's, I, I take it they only got a certain amount of time then. So the people that are due for renewal this month have until the end of the month if they don't complete their renewal. They will, their insurance will end the last day of this month. And then next month we'll get another list. So and for so the next. Oh, okay. So it's not like. Um, um, uh, cohorts. Is that what you're going No. What was it when you go to, not renewal, um, like your health benefits? Because isn't that once a year? Oh, open enrollment. Oh, open enrollment. Oh, enrollment. Oh, yeah, you. no, this is That's different. That's a good question. Okay. Yes, yeah. this is That's different. That's a good question. Okay, so it's each month. So people that have been doing it since 2019, The month you apply, yes. when, you, okay. when you get approved, you get 12 months of coverage. So that month, the next year, is when you're due for renewal. Okay. Yeah, so with, with Medicaid, you have 12 months of renewal. So it all depends on which month you apply. Yeah, so yeah. like if you applied oh, October, like I'm just putting random date, October in 20, like in a, in a non-pandemic world, if you applied October 2020, you'd have to renew October 2021. That's yes. a whole year. There's no year. open enrollment for Medicaid. Yes. Okay. Right. It's 12 oh. months from the date you applied. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every year you have to renew? Yes. Mm -hmm. With exceptions. What are the exceptions? Well, if your income stays the same, okay. our computer system reaches out to the IRS and it will auto renew you for five years. So you may not have to touch your application. Oh. Mm -hmm. It can. Yeah. Now, do people, I guess people would get a renewal notice though when it's time? They yeah. get emails, they get texts on their phones, they get letters in the mail, they get phone calls from their managed care organization. 
we get a list every month. We call each person in Hartford County, remind them that they're due for renewal. Okay. You said the important one, which a lot of people forget, is the mail to the address. Because mm -hmm. everybody's always, phone numbers change a lot, yes. emails change a lot. Mm -hmm. And mail. We yeah. get a lot of return mail. Yes. A well, lot. Yeah, that does change a lot. Especially since it's been sitting for three years. Mm -hmm. and That's one of the big issues right that. now, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have moved and haven't notified of their current address or phone number. Ooh. So you get those return mail. I have a question, though. What if someone forgets or for some reason doesn't do right now, like update their information right now and the deadline passed? Can they still do it after? Yeah, their, yes. their insurance would close the last day of the month, mm -hmm. and then they would have to reapply, reapply. with a new application. But they can still do it even if it's not open enrollment. Correct, because there, is no, open, there is, is no open not. enrollment for Medicaid. It, okay. You can come in any day and apply or do it yourself online. They would just have a lapse in coverage. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which I guess whenever they go to the doctor or whatever and or they realize it. Right, and, realize and that's when mo that's when a lot, believe it or not, a lot of recipients realize right. that they've shut down Ooh. because they go to the pharmacy mm -hmm. monthly to pick up prescription. So how long does it take? All right, if if they miss the renewal, mm -hmm. how long does it take for them to reapply? Depending on how many people are on their application, a single person is about ten minutes for an application. That's it. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, because all of your information is already in there. We just uh -huh. pull it back up, re-verify mm -hmm. all of your information, hit the submit button. And if your income hasn't changed, you're still income eligible, it will okay. go right through for you. So, and renewal is probably about the same. Correct. Yes. That is a renewal. Yeah. Uh, okay. But a regular application is about 10 minutes as well for a single person. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's pretty quick then because yeah. I know sometimes when you apply for things, it could take weeks or months. Right. Yeah. Social services has up to 30 days to process an application, but we have... We have to we do ours in front of you. Yeah, and you know right away. Yeah, right. If you were eligible or not, and you will be effective that same day or as of the first of the, the month. First of the month, always. No matter what day you come in, it starts the first day of the month. Oh, so if somebody goes to fill their prescription like the middle of the month, and their their Medicaid's already expired. They got to wait until the first. Or no, pay it. no, they can apply that same day. It's gonna but it doesn't open start back. The first. It's, no, it's gonna open back up to the first day of the month. So if you came in today, it would open no, up March first. Oh, that same mm -hmm. the same for month. the renewal part. Oh. Both. Oh, for both. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So let's say I go in and I apply for insurance March seventeenth. It'll be effective Retro March first. March first. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's good. Although physically you don't have the card, right? Yeah. But you're covered if you go into. The, the doctors, so for instance, and you got bills, that will be covered. Now, the only lapse that... If the doctor are, takes that insurance yeah. company right. that you, you have chosen. But oh, if they wow. lapse? The only lapse that could occur is if they wait, if they wait long enough, the MCO, if the MCO shuts down, that mm -hmm. does take 10 days. 10 business days 10 to, to reopen. 15, to reopen. What is MCO? That's the managed, managed care, care organization, or I would say the insurance, insurance company. Insurance company. Oh, okay. oh. So the state of Maryland contracts with nine different managed care organizations to handle your care. So when you come in, you tell us which doctor you want, and then that doctor is on a list of who they can bill out of the nine. It could be all nine. Right. But yeah. you would have to select one of the umbrellas that they bill under. Okay. If we have technically doesn't can't ACCU help you pick your managed care organization? Or who do we have that helps? We, we can, that. okay, MCHIP can help provide guidance on who to pick for your managed care organization because that could be really stressful. Right. If someone comes in and they don't know who to pick, I mean, especially if there's, what, we have nine, you said? Nine. Mm -hmm. You have nine, like, how, how, how are you going to know which one's going to be the how best one for you? Know exactly. Yeah. 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 Jai. So ACCU sort of educate them on yeah. the benefits of Yes. So the, the reason why we do it is because when you do your application, as soon as we hit that submit button that says you're eligible, mm -hmm. you have until 5 p.m. the next day mm -hmm. to select okay. your doctor and your MCO. If you do not do it, the computer selects it for you. Oh. And that's, oh. that's what shows up on your insurance card. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you don't want a random doctor or a random managed care organization. You want to yeah. make sure you can go where you would like to go. Right. Yeah. So we, as caseworkers, give you a list of all the primary care doctors in Hartford County that take Maryland medical assistance, and you can go off the list and choose one. You can change your doctor every day, but you have to keep that managed care organization for 12 months before you can change that. Okay. So when it comes to that, what I guess... 
my question is for what's covered and what's not covered? Just about everything. Really? You mm-hmm. get hospitalization, pharmacy, prescriptions, dental, vision, everything's covered. X-rays, 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 yes. X-rays immunizations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Referrals, for pharmacy, for pharmacy some prescriptions, generic have a dollar copay and non-generic have three dollars, but that's about the only copays you ever pay. How much again? A dollar for generic and three dollars for non-generic. Wow. But now when you talk about dental though, I know a few clients that have Medicaid, it covers just a few things. That's not true anymore as of January 1st of this year. Oh. It's no, dental it's coverage. coverage. Mm-hmm. Yep. And now adults with um, Medicaid, mm-hmm. they can get dental care. Yes. They Seriously. Can. That yes. is, that's Starting probably that's, January 1st. Yeah. January 1st. Yeah. Yeah. So that was one of the best things that kind of happened um, in January because yeah. that's really unfortunate that yeah. Wait a minute, is that overall, not just for people going through the health department, but people overall people on Medicaid? People have any person on Maryland mm-hmm. Medicaid. Yeah, as long as you have Medicaid. Does that, uh, yeah, that used to not be the case? No. Nope. No. Nope. It started yeah. January 1st. And it was mm-hmm. very hard to get into a dentist. It's Why still very change? hard to find a dentist. Yeah, right yeah. now. We have a lot more yeah. clients yeah. than we have dental dentists, providers. Yes. yes. But in Maryland, mm-hmm. healthy smiles. Unfortunately. Because yes. yeah. yeah. not all dental yeah. providers yeah. are going to take Medicaid. It, right. So, unfortunately, so if there's dentists out there, dentists out there that are hearing this, please take Medicaid. We have a lot of people that need dental care. <laughs> all right, because this, because all right, so with Medicaid, Medicare, Med, all right, what's the difference between Medicaid and Medicare? Oh, so there we go. Medicare, Medicare takes care of your elderly. Medicaid is aids to families and children. Oh. Okay. With exceptions. So Medicaid covers everything, but Medicare does not. Sixty-five and older is Medicaid. Unless you're Medicaid. disabled. Yes. Well, yes. If you've been getting a Social Security disability check for more than 24 months, you automatically get Medicare, Medicare. Okay. with your check. So there are there are people that are under age 65 that are getting Medicare, and that's a whole nother ballgame. And then so can they get both things, Medicaid and Medicare? Yes, you oh. can get Medicaid as a supplement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So explain that. The remember we were talking about the how we determine the difference between uh, Medicare and Medicaid, how you can the the aid and then the care. So like if so you, Medicare takes care of the elderly. Yep. Okay. Medicaid is aid to families and children. What's considered elderly? Sixty-five. <laughs> I was gonna say you. But you know, sixty-five well, and above. Unless you buy that though, sixty-five is still young. As yeah, United, these days, yes. As a United States citizen, when you turn sixty-five, you're eligible for Medicare. Yeah, you automatically get that. Red, For white, now. and blue card in the mail. Yeah. Yes, that's true. The way people keep working into their 70s and all that might change. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're going to change. No, yeah. I'm not that old yet, Ron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i got five more years. It's funny. <laughs> when, I was, when I was younger, I thought 50s was old. Yeah. And now mm. I'm 28, and my mom is so young. And in, my, in my eyes, my mom's young, but she's 62. Mm. I don't oh, okay. Know. That works. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, a, it's no longer, it's just a perspective. No, I know. I was the same way growing up. I was like, God, my parents are so old. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm them. Yeah. And yeah. Actually, it ain't just my daughter and her and the kids. It's even some of my friends are like, God, you're so old. <laughs> Ryan. Uh, yeah, I'm old too now. It's okay. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, stop it. So there's 60 different categories of Medicaid, and there's huh? there's 60 different categories. Yes. So it's all right. Explain to... each category. It's basically just 60 checkbooks for the government with different pots of money. Is the easiest way to explain it. So this pot of money is just for pregnant women. This pot of money is just for children. This is just for disabled children. So you have to figure out which one they're eligible for and whether or not they're going to be eligible in our computer system or have to go outside our office for services. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. So like. If you have Medicare, there's two types of Medicaid that work with it, but they're through Department of Social Services. You cannot be in our computer system unless you have a child in your household under the age of 21. There's always an exception to everything. Yeah. So. Could you fall under more than one category? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Man, that's got to be a lot of work for you guys. It's. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun work. <laughs> it's a lot of fun work. It's a, it's a it is work. a lot of fun work. Yeah. Every application that comes in every is day you learn something new. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, it is. It is. And it's fun to see what she gets versus mm-hmm. what application 
mm-hmm. she gets. The mm-hmm. other person might get. Yeah. So how many of you in the in the department total that handle all this? Um, uh, right now we're at eight. Something. We're at eight right now, and we're looking to hire one more. Really? Possibly mm-hmm. two more. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you listening, if you're <laughs> that, you might but we are only for the Hartford County. So there are right. so many more caseworkers. Yeah, you have counties. this unit in every county. Yeah. yeah. Some are state employees, some are county employees. They're all through mm-hmm. different divisions. But Okay. So explain everybody to, because I, and I, I found this out from doing the podcast with the health department for so long. Because um, some people have contacted me and are like, well, how do you know if you're eligible? Because not everybody in the county is eligible. It's based on family size and income. Mm-hmm. And every different one of those different types of Medicaid have different income limits Mm -hmm. and qualifications. Some look at assets, some don't. Ours do not. Okay. So if you give us a call, we can certainly ask you how many people in your family. If there are six people, we can tell you what you'd be eligible for. If the parents want insurance, it's a different category than if it's just for the kids. The children's program is pretty high in income limit. Hmm. And pregnant women is very high. So if they give you a call, what number would they call? 410-877-1040. 410-877-1040. We I, have offices in Edgewood, Bel Air. Um, we're getting ready to open up the Havity Grace office. It's not quite open yet. We're at Havity Grace. Um, so in Great Glen, uh, yeah. In the Bill Bateman's old... Oh, okay. 2015 Flosky Highway. (laughs) (laughs) That's across the street from other offices, right? Yeah, Yeah. across from our WIC office. Okay. It's right right next to the um, Holloway Eye. I can't. I can't. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, and we will be opening the Saturday office to help with the renewals um, this Saturday, 9 to 1, in Havity Grace. Only. That's the only office that's going to be open, and the 25th, yeah. 9 to 1. And we're going to try to do that um, Saturday hours, two Saturdays a month, every month. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see we're how it goes put this it on month. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Because yeah. people work. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's, it's hard for them to get in, so we're trying to pick a... Yeah. And then, too, because, um, as, we, as she has explained before, because during the pandemic, everybody was just getting these extensions. Mm-hmm. Right. Nobody was being renewed. People sort of get out of that habit of renewing. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a refresher course. But right. Yeah, you got to get back there. Now, do they have to come into the office, or can they renew online? They can renew it online. Okay. What's, mm-hmm. how do they, what's the website for that? MarylandHealthConnection.gov. Okay. They should have a username and a password. Yep, already. If they don't remember their username, they're welcome to call us. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as they have an email address in their account, it will reset their password through their email. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they could also go to www com to look at all the information that we yes. talked about today. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is the, the part I love the best. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we're going to start with you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so how, how long have you actually been with the health department? Five years. Five years. Mm-hmm. What were you doing before you came to the health department? I was working at Pandora. The jewelry company. Oh, I, I thought worked. you were going to tell me the, the streaming service. For <laughs> no, no, okay. no, no. I was with, um, I was um, at the headquarters downtown, right, um, right over uh, this baseball. What's that? Oh, Orioles, uh, Park? Orioles Park? Yes, the Camden Orioles. Yard. Yeah. Camden Yard. Okay. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Camden Yard. Love it. So what, what, you, what made you decide to get into public health? Well... Actually, I, I, I really wanted to keep working at Pandora, but I was a temp, and they got rid of the, all the temps. So I, um, I applied through an agency, and there was an opening, and here I am. And you get to work with all these beautiful people. <laughs> I know. I like it, though. I, I mean, I really, really love it. Everybody I've met here so far is great. We've yes. been such an amazing yes. one. I mean, we have a great... <laughs> Ron, you that forgets my going Great crew right now. We'll talk about it during the podcast. <laughs> and we just, we have fun working together. We bounce things off each other. Um, something comes up. Other. Yes, we learn from each other. We learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a learning, to me, it's a learning experience every day. And That's good. I like yeah. that. Yeah. And like I say, the, the new crew that we have right now, it is just, like anybody that's looking, if you want to come join us, please come and join us. It is amazing. 
Huh? I have someone for you. Sure. I know someone that's looking for a job, and I know she'll be a great fit. Awesome, Bad awesome. Info. So, yeah, we will be, you know, <laughs> we will be looking for people, so. Jeremy's back there like, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. 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 Don't make hey, his job I'm there. a great boss. <laughs> yes. yeah. We try to keep a bilingual employee in each location, yes. so it just makes it easier. Right. It's a little more personable than going through the language line. We oh, always okay. have the language line available, but it's much nicer. Yeah, I think it's, a, yeah, I Spanish think people like that much better yeah. with that one and one And your employees follow you. If, if you've helped them before, they will find you no matter what location you're at. <laughs> yes. They will ask for you. They will come back and ask for you. Hey, do you remember me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, all the faces you see. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, would, I would save Karen for last. Oh. When doing the, the, the question. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Emily. <laughs> yes. Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you've been over there. Yeah, because well, I might not ask you those same two questions. Oh, okay. Because you've been over Go there right so ahead. quiet and everything. <laughs> you know. Okay. But, but no, well, how long have you been here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to coming up on six months. On, oh, really? This month. Yes. Oh, so you're the rookie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> both of you are? Yeah, I'm on board. Yes. Oh, so what were you doing before this? I worked at the um, Klein Family Hartford Crisis Center. Oh, really? Yeah. How long were you there for? Um, Since they first opened, like three mm -hmm. years. What? what were you doing there, if you don't want me asking? Um, patient registration. Okay. Yeah. That's an awesome place. Mm -hmm. Great place. So why did you decide to jump over to here? Um, I wanted to do something different. Um, right. But I, at the same time, I still wanted to stay where I'm working with people. Mm -hmm. And I kind of understood how important um, having medical insurance was, especially with um, addressing mental health. Yes. So I figured, you know, similar in the same line of work, so, yeah. And you've been here six months? Yeah. And you get to sit next to me. I am so <laughs> Now I do feel special. Because <laughs> you put me next to the new person. I love that. It, it, what, G, G, not Giovanni. Giovanna. Giovanna. <laughs> Gio and you've been here shorter? Five months? Same, no. same. Or say same, six months. And what were you doing before so that? You, you Jumping, jumping. Oh, no, no, no. I'm a rookie too. <laughs> With a master. <laughs> I've been here also for six months and I was working. Um, actually, I was doing kind of the same in a different platform because I used to work for the website Maryland Health Connection, oh. setting up people to Medicaid and also qualified health plans, which is what people mostly know by Obamacare. Right. So I was doing about it. Well, so isn't there um, private insurance? In the yeah, but isn't there a nonprofit organization that that works with that a lot? The Maryland Health Connection. You mean it's our computer system, but oh, okay. Okay. we're so not yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about. Seco. Yes, not, that's us. Okay. Yeah, we're not yes. licensed to sell you insurance, right. which would be your Obama care plans. Right. So yeah. if you do come in and you're not eligible for Medicaid through our computer system and you're going to get the tax credits for Obamacare, we would refer you to CECO. Okay. They are called the navigators. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, I've had them on a couple of times. Uh, come open enrollment time. And, and yes, October. Oh my God, I can't remember the two ladies' names. Crystal. And yes, Claudia. and Claudia. God, oh. <laughs> we, we talk to them all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We work hand in hand with them. She's my new assistant. I'm bringing you on. Sorry, I'm <laughs> Jeremy. I'm sorry about stealing some of your help. No, I can't. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so, 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 so why did you decide to come here? Well, actually, when I applied for the um, Maryland um, for the state, mm -hmm. I said uh, I'm working for for the middleman. Can I say that? <laughs> so I was working. You just did. Yes, I was. <laughs> you can edit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was working directly for the health department. Right. I was working with a contractor that managed the call center. Okay. So where you call I was the eight hundred number? Right. Yes, the one eight hundred number that everybody calls in. Yeah. That's what I used to get the phone calls. Oh, okay. Yes. And we so say the, then I said, if I move to, to the state department, that's going to be. Yeah. And we're very happy she did. And that's going to be in person. I always, yeah. um, previously, I was exposed. You know, I was uh, doing customer service all my life in person and having. 
to assist customers on the phone has some limitations that yeah. we just didn't want. Yeah. And we're going to say the best for last. <laughs> Jeremy. Hey. <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's at I'm joking. I'm messing with you. Jeremy's at what? No, I, I, you know, you said you didn't want to talk, so I'll, I'll let you slide this time. Oh, I said that too. Oh, wow. What? I said I didn't want to talk. I didn't get us to slide. <laughs> well, you know, you you, you know, grabbed the next. chair right away. Yeah. Yeah. You pulled yourself right up to the head of the table. <laughs> so, you know, okay. sorry. <laughs> so, this month I've been here 22 years. Get out of here. I have always done M chips since I came with the health department. I think M chips wonderful. I think when they come through the door and they ask for help with insurance, mm -hmm. our department always gives them a ton of other references, whether it be energy assistance, help with their water bill, um, the doctor's list that we print out for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're just there to help them with whatever they need if they say they need help with um, getting through another service within the health department immunization or dental we help them with all of it so that's you said 22 like. years uh did jeremy tell you the news yet no yeah you can't retire race. you can't no you cannot retire for another 22 years oh. yet. <laughs> until i retire <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, what were you doing before this, though? I worked for the airlines for 11 years. Are you serious? And I had fun just traveling the world, having no care. You were a flight home. attendant or a um, pilot? I was a flight attendant during the furlough days when the flight attendants were furloughed and they pulled all of us. But I was the director's assistant, so I did all the hiring, okay. um, all the reports. Wow, what a big switch. Accounts, yeah. So what made you decide to get into public health? My friend was a state employee, and she's like, you have to apply. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> I didn't really know anything about it. Right. It was a, a field that I had no information for. It seems like that's a common thing. And of all the people I talked to, a lot of people didn't know. There's a lot know. of people. It's yeah. more like the younger people now that have, they're getting now. Yeah. Public health degrees is more of a thing now. Mm -hmm. So people are getting it, and then they're going into, versus a lot of the people that have been here at public health degrees weren't really a thing. And then yeah. But, but we've had health departments for a long time, and we've got employees. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Who's your favorite person to work with? No, I'm joking. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we know, it's, we know it's Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> I think we all get along very well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all get along very yes. well, which is why I like the unit. Yes. Yes. And everyone yes. that has left our unit has excelled through the health department. Like, yes. Very yeah. high up positions and yeah it's sad to see them go but I'm happy to see them advance yeah mm -hmm. I have to admit I, I do miss coming here and doing this because yeah, it, I just love meeting everybody it seems like everybody's always in here although some people came in here like nervous <laughs> is there anything you guys like to add uh, did you guys just say about where men where they should go for the Medicare, they sh they should they shouldn't be coming to us. They should. Well, it to depends them. on their income. Yeah, we're either going to refer them to Department of Social Services for the Quimby Slimby or Office on Aging. So it's not just like a straight cut. We right. need to go here. So I just wanted to like, can I remind everybody like the locations, like the addresses for our locations? No. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so if they need to update their info, they um, there's multiple ways again, so they can come in person to our Bel Air location, which is 120 South Hayes Street in Bel Air, Maryland, 21014. Our Hartford County Health Department location in Edgewood, 1321 Woodbridge Station Way in Edgewood, 21040. And that's Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Or they can show up to one of our Saturday events on March 11th or March 25th in Harvard Degrees, 2015 Pulaski Highway, Suite D, Harvard Grace, Maryland, 21078, and that's from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. They can go to MarylandHealthConnection.gov, and if they still need help, they can call 410-877-1040. Awesome. Now, the Saturday things, is that, is that going to be in April, too, or is that just this month? Well, we're hoping that we could extend it, so we'll see how it goes for okay. this month. Um, see what, what sort of um, re response we get. Right. Yeah. Okay. We'd love to do it. Um, yeah, like every, every week, every month. You know, yeah. Two Saturdays a month, or maybe at mm -hmm. least one Saturday a month, yeah. to help our clients at work. I like that because we do have a lot of clients in mm -hmm. that area. 
yeah. Aberdeen, Harvard and Grace. I want to thank you all so much. It was fun, see, wasn't it? Pamela, you didn't need to be yeah. scared. <laughs> see, I don't you bite. You made it fun. <laughs> fun or funny? No, you made it fun. Oh. Oh. <laughs> they, they, huh? just, they just met you. That's um, yeah, yeah. What are you trying to say? Uh-huh. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast... Or if you would like to recommend somebody for me to get on the podcast, or if there's a topic you want me to talk about, just go to conversationswithrichbennett.com, click the Be a Guest link, and fill out the form, and I'll get in contact with you, and we'll get everything set up. And while you're there, please subscribe to the podcast, as well as the newsletter. And check out all my sponsors, and of course, my co-hosts. Please show your support for all of them as well. Until next time, my name is Rich Bennett. Stay safe, and thank you for joining the conversation. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support, and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Baltimore's Best Roofing Contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Hill Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Hill Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time.